Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with a quick review of the Mini 3 Pro and all the options available for this particular drone. Now, this is a unique drone from DJI because it's the first drone that they've offered in several different packages, which can make it a little confusing, but I like that because it gives you a ton of control. So the drone is offered as a standalone drone. So if you already own a controller that's compatible with it, like the RCN1, you can get just the drone and fly it with the controller you already own. They also offer it as a combination with the RCN1 controller, which is the standard controller. You'll use this, your phone or your tablet, and you can fly the drone. They've also introduced the brand new DJI RC, which is a smart controller that works with the drone as well. And to make things even more confusing, they offer these in packages that are standard packages or a fly more combination. And the fly more combination includes a lot of other accessories that you're gonna end up buying anyway, like a case, a charging hub, and extra batteries. And where it gets really confusing is the batteries are offered in two different flavors. There's a standard battery, which is a little bit lower as far as capacity goes, and that allows you to fly for 34 minutes on a full charge, which is a long time up in the air. But they also offer a plus battery, which will increase that flight time by eight minutes to 42 minutes in the air. Now, the question might be, which of those two batteries should I go with? And that's really what I wanna talk about today, because the controllers are pretty easy to decide between, but the batteries are really where it gets a little bit tricky. And there are a few things you need to consider about the batteries. So for starters, it would make sense to get the larger battery because you get extra flight time. The problem is the drone was designed to standard 249 grams, and that's a really important weight in the United States and elsewhere in the world, because if a drone is under 249 grams, it's not considered a drone in a lot of cases, which means in the US, you won't have to register it. You can fly it very easily without a registration. Um, there are other things that come into play in other countries because if you're flying in some countries, if the drone weighs more than 250 grams, you have to take a test, you have to get insurance, you have to be certified. So the 249 gram weight limit is really important worldwide. So in the US, if you don't want to register your drone and deal with that, keep it under 249 grams and the standard battery, this one, will keep that drone under 249 grams. If you go with the plus battery, this one, you get a lot more flight time, eight minutes more of flight time, but it puts over the 250 gram limit. Now for me, I don't think that registration is that big a deal because if you're flying as a hobbyist in the US anyway, it's a $5 registration fee and you can use that same tail number on all the drones you're flying. So it's just a matter of going online, paying your $5, you get a registration number, you put it on your drone and just go off and fly. And then you can fly a drone that's way heavier. So it's not a big deal in the States, but in other countries, it can be a pretty big deal. So if you're living in one of those countries where the restrictions are really important, you're gonna to wanna to standard the 249 grams by using the standard battery. Another key consideration is the weight of the drone and the wear and tear on the drone. A lot of people are wondering, well, gee, the heavier battery probably puts more wear and tear on the drone. The honest truth is DJI designed this drone specifically for the larger battery and came out with a smaller battery to offer it under 249 grams. So all the electronics inside the drone, including the flight controller, the ESCs that spin the motors, the intelligence that understands how the drone is buffeted in the wind and how it can crank up the performance of those motors if needed to compensate for that wind, was all designed for the larger battery. So you're not really increasing the wear and tear on the drone. You're actually working less hard by using a lighter battery. So don't worry so much about the wear and tear on the drone. And I only know this because that was one of my first questions when I spoke to DJI about the brand new Mini 3 Pro, I said, you've got a larger battery. Did you think about the wear and tear on the drone to compensate for carrying that extra weight inside the drone? And that was the answer I got. So don't fear the wear and tear on it. So what it really comes down to, I think, if you're living in the United States, using the larger battery, in my opinion, is a way better way to go because it gives you all that extra flight time in the air. And you might think to yourself, well, eight minutes isn't really that long. Is that really that big a deal? You have to remember that when you're flying a drone, you're typically putting a drone up to go capture some footage of a beautiful area or take some pictures of things that are really interesting. And a lot of the time, you're gonna spin up the motors, you're gonna get up in the air, you're gonna spend quite a bit of time getting out on target. And then when you're on target, you wanna spend as much time around that particular area or object to get the perfect framing, to get as much footage as you can capture. And then you've gotta get all the way back to your takeoff position to land. Having an extra eight minutes means I've got eight more minutes of time on target. 
to capture that perfect framing, to take extra pictures to make sure I've captured everything I need of that particular scene. So it gives you a lot more time to actually get the footage you need when you're up in the air because you can't really get away from spending time getting on target and spending time getting back from target. So that extra eight minutes really can make a big deal when you're in the air. And quite honestly, 42 minutes of flight time was really something that took me a while to get used to because most of the drones I flew before that were 30 minutes or less in the air. And when I started flying the Mini 3 Pro, I put it up in the air and I was constantly thinking, I have to be running out of battery power. And I'm looking at the battery level on the controller and I've still got 10 minutes, 12 minutes of flight time left. And it just took me a long time to get used to that. So 42 minutes is the perfect amount of time up in the air to get out, get on target, take some pictures, take some amazing footage, then fly back and land. It's not like you can't do that if you're using the smaller battery with 34 minutes of air time, but to me, if you're gonna make the decision in the US at least, pay the $5, register your drone, go with the bigger batteries, you're just gonna have a lot more fun in the air because for me, the more time I can send flying and the less time I have to be on the ground changing batteries, that's a really good day. So that's my two cents on it. If you're in another country, it's a bigger deal, but again, in the US where I fly, not a big deal to register it with the FAA. And that's pretty much all I had for today. Wonderful drone, in my opinion, probably the best drone flying today for the price. There are a lot of other drones out there that you can be flying that have advanced features and functions, but the Mini 3 Pro, with the capturing capabilities of the camera, the ability to avoid obstacles, the A-Pass technology that allows it to fly through a very wooded area and dodge all the trees, it's just a phenomenal drone. It's small, it's portable, it's lightweight, it takes up less space in your suitcase than a can of soda. I just think DJI has built the ultimate drone with the Mini 3 Pro. It, they're going to be hard pressed to actually beat that drone with whatever they release next in that Mini series. But that's just my two cents. And believe me, I fly all the drones and I love this drone. That's it for today. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, to cut this short, go with the bigger battery, pay the FCC registration if you're in the US, and just get out there and have a lot of fun flying. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy.